I said I'm head down. I'm so sorry for the rain now. I, I said I'm head down. I'm so sorry for the rain now. I, I said I'm head now. I'm so sorry for the rain now. I, I said I'm head now. I'm so sorry for the rain now. If I was to define define our style of play, I would say just tenacious and proud defensive team that that transitions quickly to offense. That 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 would be my dream for every team. I want a team that is so proud to play defense. I want a team that when you see a teammate block a shot or your goalie make a big save, you cheer almost louder than you do when a guy scores a goal. It's I want us to be proud of the fundamental small things that go into hockey games on our half of the ice. The you know the gritty stuff, the the, the blue collar stuff that that guys don't necessarily get accolades for, and there's no, there's no stat category for it, but stuff that we really, we really consider extremely imperative to winning hockey games. There, it's a great group of guys, and uh, I know guys say that all the time, but really we do. Uh, there's not a bad thing I can say about any of them, so um, they all bring their different <laughs> personalities and all, all that to the rink, but I think that's what uh, joins us together as a team. So. I just love competing. I love the grittiness of, uh, of Knoxville and the team uh, Coach Craig has created. It's more of a physical and, and uh, a chippy game and that's exactly how I play. And um, I love the atmosphere of the crowd in Knoxville. Um, probably the worst place to play against. And uh, you know, I just love, love where we're living and the guys are great obviously as well. Hockey's, hockey's a sport where guys can be in and out. You know, it's like a revolving door sometimes. And until you get that team that the coach feels like he wants. So I mean, um, yeah, in terms of forming that chemistry and and uh, that bond with every guy, because um, I mean, you're battling with those guys every night, and it, it's definitely important. And uh, it's a big part of teams that end up winning a championship versus teams that don't win a championship. I would say. You know, the teams that do win championships are the teams that are extremely close and have a tight bond with each other.
mean, obviously, you grow up in Canada, you shake a tree, a hundred hockey players fall out, there's nothing else to do over there. Especially back when I was a kid, it was just like, you know, I started skating at three years old, and I don't know, it's just uh, my uncles, one of my uncles actually made it to Major Junior A, and so I watched him, and it kind of fell in his footsteps, and, uh, you know, it was just the thing to do, and as a kid, you know, unlike today, where you can run around the streets and, you know, not really worry about things, and my, my mom was just like, you know, make sure... Just make sure you're back when the street lights come on. So that was the thing we would just take. It's pretty easy. Take a stick and a ball and have them make makeshift nets or whatever, and just kids would show up and play. And it was just instilled, and it became in your blood. And you know, I was very, very fortunate to get to the levels that I got to, and uh, just uh, you know, mentored by the right people and great coaches. And you know, a lot of uh, I've said it many times. You know, a lot of a lot of life lessons learned by it. But. Uh, you know, I grew up in, a, in relatively small towns in, in Canada, and next thing you know, I was drafted, moved away from home at 15, then all of a sudden I'm drafted again to the NHL at 17 with the New York Islanders, and it was just all fast, really big whirlwind things, and, you know, before you know it, you got agents waiting for you to talk to you after games in, in junior hockey, and it was just all so surreal. I started skating when I was uh, two and a half, three years old. Uh, back, I grew up in a really small town in, in northern northern Ontario. So I started actually started as a figure skater. I was uh, my parents had me into figure skating pretty early with the little bob skates on. And figure skating wasn't a real good fit for me, so uh, they put a put a hockey stick in my hands. And I was so small when I first started playing that I, the equipment wasn't small enough. So I had. Uh, like old magazines strapped to my legs for shin pads and my mom made me these pair of uh, red mittens, padded winter mittens to wear as gloves. So it, it was, I was little, but uh, that's, I would say three years old when I first started playing. I started skating when I was three. I didn't want to play hockey, so I was, playing, I was in figure skating for the first couple of years. And then I started playing hockey when I was five. Well, I played juniors, so you play until you're 21, and then uh, after my last year of juniors, then I went and played in the FHL for a year and a half, so this is my sixth year of pro. Uh, it was actually the last, last summer. Uh, I made the decision to uh, move on from school. I played two years in college at uh, Adrian College, which is Division III NCAA and um, I decided that I was ready to make the step and, and kind of trying to find a way to get there and obviously made it through free aging camp, so i um, pretty pumped to be here and just have an opportunity to play. I was diagnosed uh, di with diabetes when I was 14 years old, type 1, so that means um, my pancreas stopped producing insulin. It was one of those things where I didn't know what was going on. I didn't really understand diabetes at the time. I just figured that it was a rare case and maybe something that was unique to me being a diabetic, so I just figured that I could keep playing. When I got diagnosed, I was like just about, like my blood sugar was 50 times that of what it should be. So I was in the hospital and just really feeling terrible for the past month or so and losing a bunch of weight and kind of when they said you have type 1 diabetes, I was like, oh, okay, well, you know, like, all right, so well, give me a shot and it'll be over. But uh, obviously that wasn't the case. And when they said it was a lifelong uh, battle and, and all, that, all the things like that, I was kind of nervous, but obviously I have a good support system at home. And ever since then, I've been just kind of plugging away and, and uh, really focusing on, on it, obviously, because if it goes wayward, then I, I can't play. It's one of those things that I've been focusing on and kind of trying to be on the forefront to help kids out in the communities and yeah. stuff like that. I believe that 
for me, and this might be outside the actual question, but for me, the, the most important thing in here is the culture. It's, it's not necessarily the X's and O's, it's not necessarily the conditioning, it's, it's not all about the drills we do in practice and the systems that we run. For me, my main goal as a coach is to create a culture that A, guys have fun in, B, guys trust each other within, and C, it, it's a successful culture. It, you can have all the fun you want and guys can work all the, as hard as you want, but if you're losing, then that culture's not gonna fly. Two forwards, I'll kick a puck to this D. To that forward, that comes behind them, leave it for him, attack two on one. Then we'll merge that into the three on two. Let's reestablish our net drive there. The net drive for us is gonna be big this weekend against some of the personnel on the back end making it Columbus. I wanna make sure the guys are having fun, and if they're having fun, it usually leads to success as long as there's a limited amount of structure and system. So you gotta walk that fine line between you don't wanna be all fun, you don't want the inmates to run asylum here. There has to be some dictatorship at a certain spot and there has to be some structure. But at the end of the day, I wanna make sure that guys like coming to the rink. There were years when I played that eh, sometimes eh, I don't really wanna to go to work today. I don't wanna to go to the rink. I'm, I'm sick and tired of this or this element. So I want to make sure that guys always have fun here. And then that fun, you can kind of see it translate into the ice with, with the passion and the work. So practices are, are what they are. There's, there's only, only so much you can do. You skate, you pass, you shoot. But we try to mix it up so that the guys are always having fun. <laughs> It's, uh, we do a lot of foot, uh, foot speed drills and um, a lot of stuff that gets you thinking. It's uh, not just straightforward drills, go do, down and do this. You actually have to think about it. So it's working on our, uh, our brains, not only our brains, but our, we're, in, we're in such great shape because we, we work hard every day and get through those drills. And you know what? At the end of the day, you're, you're pretty proud of what you've accomplished. We get to the rink, we usually have a half an hour to, you know, taper sticks, stretch out, do whatever we need to do. And then, um, we go through video and basically what it is is our we usually go through our breakdowns in a game and what we can improve on as a group so whether it's in transition or d zone o zone neutral zone we kind of go through our breakdowns and then maybe some clips of what we were doing well so that we can notice that so we can keep doing those and uh and keep moving forward and progressing with that right now we fix one thing and another thing's kind of going wrong so this strong side forward in your mind, you are you're reacting off of this defensive. If he's standing against the wall, don't worry about it. You can be more aggressive on this guy walking. I love the video. I think video is, is so good when you can see it and then relate it to the game. I try to do a little bit of video every day. I know I, I admittedly go overboard sometimes and, and I see guys rolling their eyes sometimes, but it's one thing that you can't really argue about video. During the game, if a guy comes off the ice and, and I say, you know, Hey, Valley, you, you, you're you screwed up. And he's, you went here, you should have been here. And, and Valley says, no, I didn't. Well, on the bench, I can only do so much. But when we watch it on video, it's a, the best teaching tool there is. The, the evidence is right there on the screen. And usually it's constructive. I, I don't try to embarrass guys on video, but I do think it's the, the most valuable teaching tool for, for any hockey team is video. So we try to take the video before practice, touch on some things prior to going on the ice, and then the drills that we do, usually go hand in hand with, with the video that we've covered that day. So I take the video pretty seriously. I, I probably take the video and the culture in the room more seriously and I spend more time stressing about that than I do the actual on ice stuff because I believe if you've got a group bought in and, and having fun and playing with passion within your system, I think that the on ice stuff really comes hand in hand with that.
quick turnarounds where, say you're in Fayetteville, you got a seven hour bus trip there on a Friday, you go Friday morning, play the game, drive back seven hours and you have to play at home the next night. So I mean, when it's weekends like that, like we went through it tough in December and had know, the worst travel I've seen. You know, we were playing like five games in six days and like just no, no breaks. And then it starts to wear on you, you know, but then you'll get a couple weekends, like one game weekends where you catch up on your rest, you know, so it kind of evens out. Like there's going to be bad stretches where you are going to be tired there for a couple weeks, but it gets better. I think there's, there's a lot of pros and cons, of, and especially when you get older, it gets tougher on your body. But I think being with all the guys on the road and just being able to just interact with each other, just learn new things about them, you know, that you would never find out just by being in a locker room. And I think, uh, you know, I've been playing cards, just joking around with the guys. Yeah, I think that's one of the biggest things for me. Uh, but yeah, being on the bus, a long road trip, it's hard on the body, especially when you're going three games in a row and you're, you're just falling apart on the bus and you're like you're icing yourself. But uh, that's one thing I won't really miss being on there when you have injuries and stuff. But yeah, I'll definitely miss being I don't have time. You gotta eat healthy, especially on the bus. <laughs>
me coming to this league, <clears throat> obviously they won the championship last year and they had a great team. And obviously Coach Craigan's got us to a point in our season where we can do that again. Um, but, you know, as far as their success in the league, I think it's it's uh, a big thing for Coach Craig and, you know, he's kind of built those championships and he was obviously a part of this organization as a player too, so it's something close to his heart and, uh, you know, I think that Knoxville's in a great place. We have a great fan base, so that that has a lot to do with his success here and, and the reason why they're allowed to keep doing what they're doing and, and obviously for us to play here. It's funny, you would think game day is crazy busy for the guys, and that's like the most, obviously the game is the most important, and that's what we work towards, but game day is the least busy for us, for the players and for me. We're, we're more just kind of relaxed, getting ready for the game. The guys have their naps and their routines. For me, I made an out pretty quick in the morning. We have a morning skate uh, for home games very quickly, 30 minutes, then I'm gone. I have a, a little ritual I do back home. Uh, I go home, hang out with my kid. I like to chop wood. You know, game day is literally almost zero hockey leading up to the game, whereas the, the weeks and the days leading up to that, it's 12 hours plus every day, getting ready, scouting, video. So game day is just kind of, you get to relax it and enjoy the, the fun in it. But um, you know, sometimes it's a little busier, depending if we've got two opponents or three opponents that weekend. Sometimes game day is used to prepare for the next game day, but normally all the work is done by game day. So, so Friday of this week, we'll be ready to play Huntsville. Uh, all our preparation will be done, so I can just, Go out for morning skate, have some fun, rip around the ice, have some fun with the guys. Usually pretty upbeat in here on game day. Everybody loves game day. And then I go home and get something to eat, relax. Hopefully it's a nice day. And, and then come back here and get ready to have some fun in front of a good crowd. I used to extensively but when I came to pro I'm like I gotta kick all those habits because they kind of collected over the years for me um, started in junior when I was 16 and then all the way up till I was 22 years old so I was like you know what this is getting too much but uh, you know I do I do do the same things I always dance before games and it's one of those things that the guys laugh at me and stuff but <clears throat> it, it kind of loosens the mood for me and I, I like to go in and and be as like, you know, positive as I can. And, you know, dancing kind of brings that out in, in myself and, uh, you know, have one cup of coffee before the game and play, uh, we play this game called sewer ball. You got to keep the soccer ball up and, you know, elimination kind of thing. Come here in the morning, do our practice. We're usually out of here by like 10.30, 10.45. Go back to the apartments, cook, cook up some, some pre-game dinner, eat it, go to bed around one, wake up at like four, start playing the music and getting in the, getting in the zone and head to the rink around five. I mean, mine's pretty simple. I don't do anything special, just eat and sleep. Get ready. <laughs> Get ready, that's yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm getting older, so my workout routine involves a little bit more stretching and stuff, but uh, um, just uh, you gotta you gotta take advantage of the people we have here, which like the massage therapist, the chiropractor, all those, and, and Andy, our trainer, he's so, he's so good to us, he works so hard. My name is Andy Clark, I'm a physical therapist and the team trainer. Um, my job entails uh, trying to make sure these guys are healthy um, and managing any injuries. Um, trying to make sure we're keeping them on the ice so they can do what they do best. Right now we have a little bit of an injury bug, unfortunately. Um, we have to put Andrew Benazza on 30 day IR with a shoulder issue. Jake Flagel has a hand injury, mm -hmm. um, so we're just kind of waiting and seeing with him. Uh, but I mean, other than that, we're pretty good in just trying to manage things as best we can and make sure with playoffs coming that everybody's going to be ready to go. Pretty much just stretch, think about the game and visualize what I'm going to be doing out there and I think that's so important to, to do that and uh, have an understanding of what you bring to the table and 
that's pretty much it. There's nothing too special. It's just keeping, trying to work on my body and just keeping it uh, in game shape. So. sluggish start. Uh, we, we were lucky to get out of period 1-1 one, one because we, um, in my opinion, the, the reader disagreed, we had zero physicality. Zero physicality at all in our forecheck. We got pucks where we needed to get them to. We weren't turning pucks over, but once we got them down into the under the perimeter of their zone, down below their defense, we weren't finishing checks on them. So we, we know what Columbus is, we know what Columbus isn't, and, and we know what we can do to generate some offense for them. We need to make sure our start tonight is very focused. That includes physicality, that includes up ice pressure, that includes absolutely perfect with our touches on our half. We, we've just got to be very good with the puck on our half of the ice. Similar to last night, very focused, turn up the simplicity on our half, and then in the other half, that's when you can get creative. That's when you can start trying some things and that's when, our, that's when our offense is going to take over. However, first things first, we've got to get physical on the forecheck. We have to put bodies, make sure we're very focused with our start and our entries early. <laughs> like having 400 or 4,000 people over for dinner. You gotta make sure they're happy when they leave, no matter no matter the outcome, you know, because if I think of it like, okay, so these, if we have a Friday night game, these people went to work, they went to work with the, with the thought process, okay, we're going to the game tonight. And what they have to do as a family to, to make that happen, okay, let's get everybody in the car, they're coming to the Ice Bears game, it's all about Ice Bears, we're going to have this. And so the moment that they hit the parking garage, it's an experience, you know, from um, Chili Bear to the dancing guy to the dance for your dinner to the trivia to the fun stuff, the chuck a puck, all the things that we do. Um, you know, that was a plan for a day for them, for that family. And, you know, I look at it like that because it's important that whether we win or lose, they had a great time and they're going to come back and see us next time. And, you know, we're not going to win every game, although you know, obviously as a, as a GM, you want to have a great crowd. A, a great win and maybe a fight, but um, you know that's 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 all part of what we do, and, and our staff kind of exhumes everything that we do. And Bring the beat back.
get over the years. I've been here quite a while now, so you get you get to know lots of people around the city, and it's it's pretty cool how many you see that are actually like you'll see out if you're in Market Square, you know, or something. How many actually recognize you and whatnot? Oh yeah, I know, I know tons of them, and uh, I think that's one of the things I take with me playing through the leagues, being on different teams. I've always had that those friendships and they've continued all throughout the years and it's pretty cool going into another rink and they're cheering for you as well waiting for you after the games so it's here they've always been good to me they've always cheered for me even if when I was against them they were like oh great fight and all that good stuff but you know what that's that's why I want to They've, it's for me. It's gone beyond just fans. I mean, some of my best friends in my life right now are I met through hockey, I, it, through the Ice Bears. And it's such a tight knit group here that our, our fan base is not a huge faceless fan base, and we try to make sure that we're accessible enough so that the players aren't just a number and a name on the jersey on the ice. We want to make sure that, that the fans can kind of see us at, at ground at ground level with some promotions and in the community. So it it is incredible sometimes to, to think that. We're in mid-March in Knoxville, Tennessee, where there's basketball to watch, there's baseball to watch on TV, there's tons of youth sports going on, springtime, regal cinemas are everywhere around here. There's so many entertainment options in terms of food and dining, and, and we regularly put 3,500, 4,000 people in here. There's gonna be 4,500 people in here this Friday, and it's gonna be a beautiful day outside, and people are gonna come in here and watch hockey. So. It, it's, I think it's special what we've created here, and I think the fans realize that too. It's, it's an older building, but they look forward to the experience. It's, it's tradition, it's culturalized into them, and you know they do their chants, and they've got their, their routines out there too. I, I, it's funny, on game day, I, I go up the same stairwell, I walk by the same fans, I shake the same hands of the same people for the last five years, and the same woman, Sharon Milburn in Section P, says, good luck, coach, every single home game, and they look forward to it. Uh, they, our booster club's doing a tailgating event Friday before the game. You guys should check it out. So uh, it's it's cool. They, they make it their, their own, and I think it's a nice blend between the traditional hockey experience that I'm used to that I grow up with back home in Canada, and they've mixed it a little bit with that NCAA tailgating Southern mentality, and they've, and they've made it their own. Obviously, the things that they do is <clears throat> is more, I haven't seen it in pro hockey. I've seen it, seen it in college where they're just, they're announcing the other team and sucks and, and stuff like that. And then the referees even, I, and I love it. I see the refs laughing and I honestly, that builds to our, our like, you know, motivation for every game. So we do have an external motivation to get, get ourselves going. Cause you know, that's a huge part of it. And that's a lot of the fans, you know, they buy our jerseys and, and you know, just support us. And I think that's like the biggest part of, of having a close knit community it feels like here um, where you know I do know a lot of the fans you know just seeing them around and everything like that and and talking to them and they come out to support us and and pay money and we definitely appreciate it all so and having a great fan base to do that is is definitely awesome to play for. embedded in this community I mean I mean this obviously like I said I my agent asked me to come here for 20 games I've been here 20 some odd years so you know obviously I, I love it here the people are great here and uh, you know they're they're like a part of our team and I think what's pretty neat and even though we have all those banners up there it's the next season you're a champion until you're not a champion it's the way I look at it but it, it's you know we don't want to give it away you know, we, want, we don't want to give it back. This was like a couple of weeks ago, the commissioner asked, hey, can you box up the trophy and send it back? And I said, why? We're going to keep it. <laughs> Again, yeah. We don't plan on giving it back. And I said, but you can't have the handles because they fell off. <laughs> At the end of the day, I think team first mentality is, I mean, you guys probably have that sign memorized. You see it on our door every day over there. It's there are essential values to play on a team that I coach that 
for me are non-negotiable, where you have to have a great attitude, you have to work hard, you have to have a ton of passion, and, and you have to you have to have a team first mentality. That's that's how it works here. And, uh, you're never going to win championships with individuals. You're you're always 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 team will always come before personal achievements here. At the end of the day, always we will always have the attitude in here that the ice bears and the team is first. And if we if we can maintain that, I think we're always going to have a good hockey team here. Ice bears. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>